Hi, welcome to this series of videos for pupils studying OCR 21st Century Science. Uh, this is Unit 5, P5, we're looking at electricity and this particular video is about the motor effect and we're going to look at how currents have forces on them, uh, how we make a practical motor, um, the role of the commutator and the last thing is uses of electric motors. The fundamental idea here is that if you have a wire with a current flowing through it, you will always, always generate around that wire a magnetic field. In fact, it's not possible to have an electric current without a magnetic field around it. And what I'm drawing really badly here is a series of concentric circles to show the magnetic field. It's easier to draw if you imagine, if that's my eyeball, looking down the wire. So here is the wire itself looking end on and you would see if you could visualize it a series of concentric circles showing a magnetic field. Now a magnetic field can be visualized if you for example sprinkle iron filings onto a piece of paper with a magnet under it then the, the iron fines will line up with the magnetic field or flux lines. Um, so the important thing here, the key idea, is that all currents, without exception, cause magnetic fields. So what that means is if you have a conductor with a current passing through it and you bring a magnet near to that then what you've got is a permanent magnet and essentially an electromagnet. Now you know that when you have two magnets near to each other they can attract or repel and so that's what happens when you have a magnet near a current. The important thing here is to remember that you get the maximum force on these two things when the magnetic field is at right angles to the magnetic field from the current. So um, what you end up with is this will move slightly. Um, we don't need to worry about the direction, although CGP revision guides um, want you to use Fleming's uh, rules, you don't have to worry about the direction. The only thing to remember is that you get a magnetic f you get a magnetic force when the current is at right angles or 90 degrees to the magnetic field. So don't worry about um, your Fleming's left and right hand rules, you don't need them for this. All you need to know is that if the current is at right angles to a magnetic field created by another magnet, then those two things will interact and there will be a force. Now because of that, we can utilize that force to make a motor. So a motor works in the following way. I'm going to attempt to draw one here. Um, you always need a magnetic field. So here's my North Pole magnet and I'll put a South Pole magnet over here. So the important thing always is you have a magnetic field. Now that magnetic field, I won't draw the flux lines in, but they go from North to South. So the magnetic field is in this direction. So I'll just put an arrow up here to remind you of the magnetic field flowing from North to South. Now, a motor consists of magnets and a coil of wire. Now, I'm not going to draw all the coils for the sake of um, clarity. I'm going to draw the coil as a square just because that's how it's often done in the books. And so, I've got a coil of wire, so that could have a thousand, ten thousand coils on it, and each coil of wire will add a bit of force. 
And can you see that if I, let's say at one instant, the current is flowing down my wire this way and down that way and off to the battery, I've got a current which is at right angles to the magnetic field. I'll draw it in now. So this is at right angles and this is at right angles. The important thing to see here is that this current flowing down this branch is going in one direction and this one is going in the other direction. Now what that means in terms of forces is that each side will get a different direction force on it. Um, so for example this one might have an upwards force on it and because this current is going in the opposite direction it will have a force in the opposite direction. Now if this coil of wire has got two opposite forces then it's going to twist and so what happens when I pass a current through is the motor will tend to flip. So that's the basics of an electric motor. A current flowing in a coil between two magnets where the current is at right angles to the magnetic field causes a force in one direction when the current's flowing one way and in the other direction you can see we've got one that way and one that way so we get opposite forces which causes a twist. So that's the basic principle. The next part often causes pupils lots of grief. So we're going to attempt to see what would happen if, imagine these wires were connected directly to a battery. So if we had them connected just like that, we'd get that flip. But when the motor had flipped over half a turn so that this one was now over to here, you can see that the current would be flowing in this direction, which means the force would be in this direction, so it would flip back. So if you just connect a cell directly to a coil, what you end up with is a motor that flips and flips back and just does that. Now that's not really much use. The only way to make it useful is for somehow, as the magnet, as the coil flips over, we can reverse the current in the coil such that we always get the coil that's this side having a current flowing in this direction, which means it will flip again in the same direction. So it keeps on flipping, keeps on flipping, and that's the way it rotates. Now the way that we do this is with something called a commutator. Now I know pupils have lots of trouble with this, um, so we're gonna be quite pragmatic about it, and if you don't understand it, there is essentially a magic phrase that you need to learn. So. A commutator is normally formed as a split C-shaped ring, which I'm drawing horrendously badly. So there, that's meant to be two C-shaped halves, so an end-on view would be that. This one's connected to this part of the coil, this one's connected to the other, and off the coil goes around. Remember, I'm only drawing a single turn, but I might have many. And then contacting onto that, Would be a contact and on the other side there'd be a contact on there and it's those contacts which then connect to a cell or power supply. Now then if we think that the current flow um, we won't worry about electrons that's just a conventional current to keep it the same so if you imagine the current flows this way it flows up here along here and down remember there's a magnet here is my North Pole magnet, I'll just put an N, my South Pole magnet is there. When this flips over to this side, what's going to happen is that this side of the commutator, the C-shaped core, is then going to be touching onto this contact, which means the current direction will reverse and go this way rather than the other way. So this is the commutator this device here, its job is to reverse the current direction every half turn. 
Now, I've tried to explain this to many, many pupils over the years until I'm blue in the face. And it's one of those things that some people get and some people really struggle with. If you really struggle with it, then this is your magic phrase in the exam because it's really the only thing that can be asked about a commutator. What does it do? What it does is it flips the current direction every half turn in order to keep the magnet spinning over and over and over the same direction as opposed to flipping back and forth if it was connected directly. My suggestion is to watch um, an animation and there's many of them online animation of a DC motor. If you go look those up there'll be plenty um, to show you can watch them in detail but if you're in a pickle and you need to get through your exam as I know some of you are at this stage of the year just you're going to have to put, commit that to memory. The commutator which is uh, two C shapes one connected to each half of the coil which reverses the current direction every half turn of your motor. Last thing on motors is uses of motors and it's often surprising that pupils get tricked by this. It's a very simple question. Any use of an electric motor is acceptable to the question. So washing machines, dishwashers, oh actually I don't think dishwashers do, so tumble dryers, electric cars, or the starter motor in a, you know, a conventional petrol or diesel car, a CD player, record player, cassette player, if you still even know what one of those is. Anything that spins that's powered by electricity has got an electric motor in it somewhere. Electric drills, electric screwdrivers, etc, etc, etc. So commit a few of those to memory. Just going to quickly go back to this idea of what a motor is. Remember, all currents create magnetic fields around them so that you can't have a current without having a magnetic field. And so you can utilise that by making a motor and a motor consists of a coil between two magnets and final thing to mention is that the reason that there is no force on this part of the coil or this part of the coil or this part of the coil is because they are not at right angles remember the field must be at right angles to the current in order for there to be a force. If they're not at right angles, there's no force. So you can see these ones here, they are not at right angles to the magnetic field. The magnetic field is coming along like this. These are parallel. So there's no force when it's parallel, only when it's a right angle. And I promise you once again, there is nothing in the OCR specification which says you have to work out which direction it goes. The only thing that you need to remember is that when the current is at right angles to the magnetic field, there is a force which is at right angles to both of those. So the force, the current and the magnetic field are at right angles to each other.